Well, uh, welcome to our channel. Uh, I know you're lost if you're here, but we welcome you because <laughs> we only get five views to these videos and uh, you could be 20% of our audience. And plus there's a lot of information here. You're, you'll learn some things. Uh, I was advised that my titles are too dry, technical, uh, even with good content, nobody ever watch them. That, that was from a, a foreigner farming or a foreigner in the Philippines. So I put a title on this hoping that somebody would watch it. It's, uh, we, our focus is concrete house building, but we're having a wind turbine on the roof and a, uh, a seven meter fan in the top of the atrium. And this, this is the stator for our uh, wind turbine. Now we're gonna build the stator uh, first, uh, you know, exact, exactly the same stator and use it as a motor on the fan. And the reason we're doing that, uh, I'm gonna get to that in a minute here, uh, really. <clears throat> the reason we're gonna do that is because we can wire this uh, stator about six different ways. Uh, we can change all the operating characteristics after it's been cast. Uh, and let me explain. First uh, change that you, you won't see very often, um, this thing wants to pan. Okay. This line across here, this stator is being built in two halves, a left half and a right half. That's because the magnets that uh, are on this uh, motor pull around 11,500 pounds towards each other if they're at a three quarter inch spacing. Uh, that's dangerous to be around. You don't want to assemble and disassemble that half a dozen times. So once we get it uh, running true with a dial indicator, we don't want to mess with that. So we want to be able to install our stator or change it and wind the coils different if we wanted and, and switch it out. Or if you burn one side up, uh, you've got a chance the other side might still be viable and you're going to have to build one half. Anyway, we're going to put it in as two halves. Uh, and the reason uh, is safety, which is important. And the second half is we can take the right side, flip it upside down, and connect it right back up. Now, what that gets for us is up here, uh, you'll see we have uh, two clockwise coils. And uh, at the bottom, I'm going to get a bigger picture in just a second, two, as soon as I explain why we did it. Um, we have two counterclockwise coils. And um, the reason being, there's, there's 30 coils, 32 magnets. Uh, your coils have to divide by three for three phase. Uh, but in our case, they also divide by six, or by 10 rather. Um, so um, we can have uh, groups of uh, 10 coils or groups of five coils, uh, which means we can run half the motor or half the generator. Like in t if you haven't got cut-in speed on your generator, you only, you only run in uh, half of your coils, the other half is still grounded. And uh, I mean, not, not loaded. So it'll let your, your generator wind up more and uh, maybe get the cut-in speed where you would have got nothing with, with all your coils wired in. Um, the second thing is, um, halfway around this uh, rotation, the, uh, um, all the coils are working uh, for you. Some not very much, some of them are centered up on the magnet, uh, and, you know, worst case point, uh, but, no, but none of them are on the opposite side of the center of the magnet, pulling back. So they're all generating electricity or they're all turning the thing if it's a motor. When you go up the other side, you start uh, having things work against you. And um, by putting two coils together that are uh, the same polarity, uh, basically you start over again. And the second half works just as well as the first. So that's, that's one reason why we, we're, uh, we, we have the two coils the same polarity side by side, right at the split line. Because uh, we're thinking that it's gonna make it uh, uh, a real eye opener on performance. And that all the coils will be working in your favor. And I have a thing, uh, 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 we're gonna get to it. It's a thing that shows you how to determine if your stator 
works against you as well as for you. Uh, let's just slide this over to 3D for a second. This is the same exact drawing. Uh, I don't know if I can click on things on 3D as well. Anyway, but you can read uh, the way this is drawn up in the 3D. It's counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. In other words, it uh, it doesn't. Uh, they're they're alternating one up, one north up, and one north down, just like the magnets. Every other magnet is north up, and and every other magnet is south up or north down. So what we have is uh, we have a. Uh, one, five of our coils are in series, just like everybody else wires them, okay? But the two ends of the coil end up side by side, right? Now, I can, if I was going to run just these five uh, coils, uh, one of these wires for each of the colors, the, the blue, purple, and green, would be connected together if I was doing Y, or they would be uh, connected in a triangle if I was doing Delta. Uh, we're doing Y. Um, one, we're using a, uh, a hollow effect sensor on three of the magnets to, to when to change uh, the polarity on the feed. And because this thing draws a uh, draws or puts out on the other side a lot of amps to, to drive it as a motor, uh, I need to put 13 amps through the controller, and the controller is limited to about three quarters of an amp. So I'm going to use the controller to drive uh, IGBTs, which require voltage but no actual power. The gate is voltage driven. It's not, you haven't got to create like a MOSFET, a, a massive field for they'll conduct, which is a lot of power consumption. That's why they're, they're limited. If you look down the chart on the, on the part numbers, when you get on down there, this, uh, this 12,000 watt MOSFET has a limit of 550 watts continuous not workable for me. Anyway, so we have uh, five of our uh, coils, this case green, uh, in series. We also have the other five green coils in series. If I connect up here, um, where is it on the screen? See, I don't, I don't see uh, what you see. I'm looking at the screen and you're looking at what the camera sees. Now I'm looking at both, okay? If I collect uh, a connect plus to minus, then it, the electric flow is a negative positive. It's gonna come down there, it's gonna come up, back up here, back in and come out, and I'll have a plus and a minus. Uh, and that'll put uh, uh, 10 coils in series. I can run them as two fives. I can run them through uh, two three-phase bridge rectifiers or two three-phase uh, uh, diodes and, uh, and, and you know, generate the DC individually or as a group. I have uh, double the voltage if I get them all connected in series because they've got more turns uh, exposed to the magnets. But this, this little uh, uh, area right here has all the leads for uh, uh, all the coil sets. Let's just back up a little from it. Maybe even a lot. Now you're seeing why people don't watch my videos. It's kind of apparent, isn't it? Okay, so that, that was the green. The purple, we have five coils on that grouping. Five coils in this grouping. Again, the wires come out all next to each other. Blue. Five coils and five coils. The reason I, I'm going to call this video uh, Stator Artwork, we're going to get a large format print of this because we have a round uh, dining table six feet across with a glass top. We're going to put this under the glass. <laughs> this is a hood ornament, I guess. Um, anyway, this arrangement allows us to uh, connect them in series or in parallel or, uh, or run them separately. Just by, and also, we, the two-piece stator lets us install it and remove it uh, without disturbing any of the rotating parts. This bolts down to a frame. Uh, and you see all this space taken up by this wiring out here? This is just to draw it. It doesn't actually take that kind of physical space. Let's see if we can find an actual stator on this page.
Uh, it's, uh, I don't know what it's doing. I think this is one right here. This is the scale stator. Now you see this gray space outside of the, of the magnets. Uh, the steel disc that the magnets are on, it's actually 122 40 chain sprocket. Uh, that, that, that ends right about even with the end of the magnets. So I've got this gray area that's all uh, uh, cast uh, epoxy, it's the same uh, parting agent that it's, the coils are immersed in. The wires are coming out here. And uh, so I have this space here to just lay them wires in any way they are, as long as I don't go through these uh, um, electrical contacts here. Or uh, the bolt holes that bolt it to the uh, mounting frame. But this, this is the stator. Um, I think it's tilted in that picture. I probably can spin it and show you how it looks, but not nothing to be gained there. Um, uh, um, this is how we're going to mount that stator. We're going to have a, a half inch thick plate out here with these holes in it. Uh, this is a, 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 the first drawing, so it's, it's not totally finished. It's, it's the same, it's just that the, uh, the holes need uh, knocked out uh, on the drawing like the ones in the blue plate. This fits on top of our uh, bearing housing, and this is a quarter by one and a half flat bar. Uh, if you look through our channel, you'll find how we bend flat bar any kind of shape we want. Our uh, house has got 174 pieces of or ornamental iron all bent out of this stuff, so if you can draw it, they can bend it. This bolt pattern here matches up to the stack of uh, um, big metal shafts, basically nine, nine inches in diameter that were cut into pieces and then machined for bearings and oil seals and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, this is an inch and a half and this flange sits on top of it so we can put uh, a half inch threaded rod, you know, not on either side of the plate with a, a lock washers. And uh, the same thing with a stator, it's the same bolt pattern, exactly the same bolt pattern. So we can uh, center up the stator on the, uh, uh, on the magnet wheels. Let's go to something more interesting. That's just showing you physically with, that we don't need all this space and we haven't got it anyway. We could make it that big except for a, a little mechanical issue over here. This is, this is also 3D, but we're, we're just going to look at it straight on. This is all our housings for the bearing and oil seals and stuff. This is that, the purple, uh, same color, it's a flat bar that goes on this blue ring. And the bolts that go through that go through all this stack of parts right on down, have a knot on the bottom. And that's so we can put bearings inside of these housings and oil seals on the end and grease fittings in the side. And, and uh, there's no way to put... Uh, uh, a seven inch diameter uh, Timken bearing through a two inch hole. Uh, not in heaven survive. Um, the red ring is the red ring we just looked at. It's the uh, top mounting plate. This black thing is the uh, uh, the stator in this case. And this is uh, one set of magnets. Um, and, and our limiting factor on diameter is these uh, 20 rods here. Uh, there's a skirt around this thing. Looks like this, uh, it's off the screen. These things here's 10 segments. They got a hole in the middle. And uh, they go. Oh, of course we haven't got it. Uh, these drawings get so full of stuff after a while, I just uh, copy the part I'm using and erase all the rest. But this, this top flange up here, it's made out of segments also. And it's got 20 holes that line up 10, 10 this angle and, and uh, alternately. They're two this angle, then the next two are that angle. So the, 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 these three quarter stainless rods go right through it. Parts that we have made already. We bought the, the, this, this bearing, this bearing, this bearing, all the cups and the oil seals. Uh, 
the housing that they fit in, this is the individual housing cross sections, um, and they're totally machined. Uh, the, the, I'm having holes put in them right now that I can screw a, a, a 3 inch, inch long set screw in with a piece of uh, drill rod on it and push the bearing races out of the housing if I have to change one for some reason. I just like to be able to take it apart when I'm up on a three stages of scaffolding because this thing's 25 feet up in the air. So, I mean, it's the top of the atrium, not a, a real friendly place. All this stuff is 3D, but you have to go to the perspective view or I'll screw my drawing up. Um, this is the hub for the blade. If you were doing a horizontal axis wind term, you, you wouldn't hurt, but you'd end up with something like this. And we're running our blades, two, two blades straight across from each other. Uh, they bolt to uh, two bolts here and two bolts there, and then they have a hole in the center for the axle. Um, we can we can use uh, two blades, uh, four blades, or six blades with this bolt pattern. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to uh, go for six blades on the fan. The uh, turbine is a vertical axis, uh, and there's a reason for that. There's a, there's a reason for everything we do. Okay, we're going to get to this in just a second. This is how you determine what, what you're, what's working for you and what's working against you, and if you have the right number of coils and the right number of magnets working with them. Uh, okay, the vertical axis wind turbine. Um, if you look at a horizontal axis, like a five-blade horizontal wind turbine, it looks like a ceiling fan in your house. If, it's, if you look at it when it's sitting still, you see a whole lot of uh, space between the blades. You're not going to extract any energy from uh, that air that's going between the blades. Now, the blades are sweeping around, uh, making sort of a helical path through the air, uh, and they're redirecting it. The trailing edge of the blades is redirecting it. So uh, at some speed beyond the mechanical limit of the of the blades, you have redirect, redirected the air right at the leading edge of the following blade, and it would be self-governing. It's just that we, we don't build them strong enough to get that kind of speed. And and they, they would be so heavy, I don't think you'd ever get the cut-in speed. But anyway, uh, we have a way to build... Uh, the shape on blades to do whatever we want them to do. And if I haven't posted it, I'm going to put a video up on that. Um, basically, you go to uh, airfoil tools and you pick um, an airfoil section, and I'll have to do a video on it. But I'm, what I'm looking for is a, a minimal uh, drag on the leading edge and uh, a camber line. That's the, the, the mount that the top and the bottom are offset off of a straight line. They both. Uh, move vertically the same amount. I want one with a camber line that's really flat on the trailing part of it, like the last third of it, curved in the front and then just leveled off near the, the end. And that that means I, uh, where it goes to going straight is completely symmetrical after that. It's no longer a cambered airfoil, it's just a symmetrical airfoil with the tail end turned down a little bit. But once it goes symmetrical, I can I can curve that up into a uh, something that, that adds uh, uh, air movement. Sort of the opposite of what they want with an airplane wing. But the, using the airfoil section, it's a minimum forward drag. Uh, anyway, uh, I did the same thing on the vertical wind turbine, and there's uh, there's several videos of that on our channel. They're, o they're older videos, uh, but the reason for the vertical turbine, and it's, it's a boosted turbine, is we're uh, sending the per unit area of air going across a blade in our turbine is 15 times higher than a horizontal axis. Part of that comes from we don't have any, uh, all our blades that are re receding, you know, the ones that are doing the work, uh, get full airflow. All the ones that are coming back to you, which would impede the rotation, uh, they're behind the baffle, so no air goes past those. They're, they're actually working in a low pressure area. Doesn't help you, doesn't hurt you. But they're not, they're not hurting you is the, the thing. And the uh, baffles that uh, collect up three times the uh, rotor diameter, all that air has to go through the turbine. 
It goes through it on the way in, and it goes through it on the way out on the other side. But just the, the cross-sectional area of air going into it is 15 times higher than the same diameter, same, you know, rotor diameter as the horizontal axis. I don't understand why they're not popular. Unless they're, people look at those twisted uh, rotors, Sevelius, and, and uh, I just can't fathom how they actually uh, get any power out of it. Another thing you'll see on the internet is you'll see people that are uh, showing you a, a voltmeter or something on their turbine and, and it's spinning up. They might be turning it on an electric drill. They might spin it by hand. It may actually be running up on a tower. And they're showing you that it's putting out 44 volts or 45 volts. The thing is, it's unloaded. It's not 45 volts charging your batteries. It's 45 volts across the end of the, the two wires and the resistance that your uh, uh, meter has, which is very low, uh, if you divide voltage by resistance, you get current. So if you divide that uh, 48 volts by uh, two hundredths of an amp, then you're going to see you, you get like four hundredths of an amp current. You're not going to do anything with that. I don't care who you are. I square V, uh, V, the voltage times the current is watts. The voltage itself is uh, volts times uh, current, or uh, resistance time current. Resistance time current is voltage, and voltage, which is resistance time current, times current. So it's resistance times current squared is the wattage. I got it right on that last part. Uh, if I could edit, I'd take out the other part, but I don't know how to edit. Um, anyway, V equals IR, and you can change the the thing side to side, uh, of what, the wattage equals uh, volts times amps. So if you move things around to get wattage on one side of the equation, and simple algebra, you come with I squared R on the other side. So, and the current goes up with the, uh, uh, and the voltage goes up with the speed of the rotor. So using my rotor as uh, uh, 15 coils, uh, was that right? No, uh, 10 coils or, uh, five, you know, uh, golly, how to explain this? You have to divide by three. So 30 divided by three is 10. Uh, and if I use those as five and five, uh, it still works. Uh, well, I guess it works because it's five times three shades, that's 15 coils. So it's still divided by three, but the five coils set 